So this, we're basically going to go through some concepts and then some examples, but it's a lot of vocab and like all, all that, the theorems and stuff. There's a lot of new stuff in this chapter. So the, we started with mid segments, right? Which are probably one of the easiest ones. The definition of the mid segment is what? Good. A segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So if this is the midpoint and this is the midpoint, then that would be your mid segment. And then we had the mid segment theorem that said what? That part's right. And then there's one more part. What's the relationship of the it's length? Half half good. Good. The mid segment is parallel to the third side of the triangle and half its length. God bless, bless you. you. So with those, you got something where you, sometimes you had like all three and you had, maybe you had this side and so you had to double it to get this side or you had this side and you had to cut it in half to get this side. You also had ones where you had to like set up an equation, right? All those kind of came from that. So the mid segment is always half the full side or the full side is twice the mid segment, whichever one's easier to set up. And then questions on mid segment. Were you good on that? Yes. Outline. Outside chapter five. Outline. It's on the module all the way in the bottom. Yes. Then we got to coordinate proofs, right? So these said something where you were kind of like mapping it out. Like let's say um, a rectangle has a vertical um, height. Or a vertical side, actually. No, I wouldn't say vertical. Side of 5x and horizontal of 10x. So it could ask you to draw the rectangle. It could ask you to uh, find the length of, of a side or find the length of a diagonal maybe. Find or find the midpoint of a side or of a diagonal. Okay, these are all different. And then you'd get given a coordinate grid. Yep. And distance or length, it would be the distance formula. So if I said this is zero, my vertical side could be 5x, and this is just an estimate of a side, it doesn't have to go to 5. 10 would be double that length. Again, it doesn't have to go to exactly 10, it's just double that length. So this would be my. Vertical side, horizontal 10x, 10x, and then vertical 5x. So I think your quiz, this was the quiz one that asked for, what was the coordinate right here? Mm -hmm. So if this is 0, 0, this would be 10x, 0. This would be 0, 5x, and this one would be 10x, 5x, right? Something like that. Anna. So you said uh, that the side does not have to be to the five. Right. It's just, as long as, like, let's say there was even no numbers there. 
and it's an empty background, as long as it's double the length on the other side, because that'd be 5x and 10x, and as long as you label those points, like 0 and 5x, the actual length of them doesn't matter. So I can put like 3 and 6? Sure. Okay. Yeah, because it's not an exact, as long as it's about double, yeah. And you might not even have like an actual, you know, like there might not be numbers there. You're just, Can I see this? sure. So then if it asks for the length of the diagonal, let's say here, okay, there's actually two ways to do it because you could use the Pythagorean theorem, but you could also just find the distance between those points, right? So length is the same thing as distance given 0, 5x and 10x, 0. The formula for distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. x2 would be 10x minus x1 is 0. y2 is 0 minus y1 5x. And I get the square root of 10x squared plus negative 5x squared. which is big, yucky numbers, but the, the concept is there, right? I know the distance is from one end to the other. So when I actually get the square root of 125, this is 5 and 25, which is 5 and 5. That gets broken down into 5 root 5, and x squared, square rooted, is just x. x on the other side. Like, why did it come out? Because if it's x squared, right? So the square root of x squared is just x because it takes 2x to make x squared. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then even easier would be um, like the midpoint. If I ask you for the midpoint of this diagonal, remember the midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 over 2 and then y1 plus y2 over 2. So I'd add the 2x's, 0 plus 10x divided by 2. And then add the two y's, 5x plus 0 divided by 2. I'd get 10x over 2, 5x over 2, which would be 5x and then 5x over 2. Yep. Are we doing for the Pythagorean theorem that it's like you do this on this one? We're going to, oh, when I get to, because that's in the um, perpendicular bisectors one, right? Is that where that was? Angle bisectors. Angle bisectors. I'll pull, I'll pull up an example for that. Okay. Yeah. But you could use it here, too, because that's a right triangle. So you could use it to find the hypotenuse. Yeah. yeah. Questions on that? So it's not necessarily going to be the exact same thing. They ask different things based on coordinates. you just got to be able to plot it and then answer questions. The things that you've been asked about are, are distance or length and midpoint. So you want to make sure you review those formulas if, you, if they're not fresh in your mind. One. We, uh, mid segment and then the coordinate proof. Then came 5, 2, which is perpendicular bisector. Okay, definition of a perpendicular bisector is there's two parts to it, right? Look at the two words. What's the perpendicular part? A segment ray or line that bisects another segment. Okay, and what specifically about that angle has to happen? Right has to be a right angle. So the, the actual bisector itself could be a segment, it could be a line, or it could be a ray. that bisects We're playing, right? sure that bisects a segment that has to be a segment at its midpoint so this one has to have endpoints yep Oh, so the, sorry, I didn't add that. I said it, but I didn't add that to the word. I did bisects twice. You don't need midpoint and bisects. Okay, it's a segment line or ray that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. So it has to be perpendicular and it has to be the midpoint.
So if you're looking at the diagram that's there, the blue line can be a segment line or ray, but what it's bisecting, that gray line has to be a segment. You'd have to know that that point in the middle is its midpoint, so those two congruency marks have to be there, or it has to have length, um, and it has to be a right angle. And then the perpendicular bisector theorem said that what's true about any point that lies on that? Good. Then it lies on the, yep, perfect. So if you use the diagram that's there, if the point was on the perpendicular bisector, like the red dot that we drew, that from that red dot to the end points of that segment would be congruent. So in this one, the yellow segments would be congruent. So the converse is if a point is equidistant from the end points. of a segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector. Right? Yeah. That a point that lies on the angle bisector is equidistant from the sides. Come on.
get it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That a point that lies on the angle bisector is equidistant yeah. from the sides. Come on. You still have a lot to go through. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we have the angle, right? We said that any point that's on here is equidistant, but has to have the right angles, and then these are congruent. Okay, we're now we're back. All right, Converse said. Okay, if a point is equidistant from the sides of an angle, then it lies on the bisector of the angle. So if I knew that those yellow segments were congruent, then I conclude that the point where it intersects the angle bisector is on the angle bisector, okay? What's the point of concurrency of the angle bisector it's called? Good. 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 Obtuses on the next one, it's also inside, right? So in center is always inside. Side inside, this is inside. Yeah, hang on. And the uh, theorem says that the in center is equidistant. Yep, from the sides. All right, so if I had triangle, if I had, again, this isn't gonna be exact, but if I had angle bisectors, so this is congruent to this, this to this, this to this, that point is called the in center, and from the point to each side, they would have to be perpendicular segments, and all of those blue lines would be congruent. Okay, that's the point of concurrency, angle bisector's theorem. <clears throat> then came, so that was the end of the quiz. Like, that was the material that was covered on your quiz. Then came medians and altitudes, okay? Median goes from vertex to the midpoint. To the midpoint. Easy stuff. So if I had a triangle, I would locate the midpoint and I would connect it, locate the midpoint, connect it, locate the midpoint, connect it, okay? That point is called what? Centroid. Centroid. And the point of concurrency of the medians of an acute triangle meet? Inside. inside. All, inside right? All inside, good. And this time the theorem is the two thirds one, right? Yeah, yeah. So the distance from the centroid, or it's actually from the vertex to, to, to the, the centroid. Yep, is two thirds the length of the angle bisector. So this part here would be two thirds. This part here would be one third. Yeah, or divide by three, yeah. So if I gave you the whole length, let's say that like the whole length was 15, 
right? This would be five, this would be 10. Or if you got the 10 part, you cut it in half to get the smaller part, add those together, get the whole thing. So there's, there's a lot of different ways they could give you that information. Either the whole and you're finding one of the parts or one of the parts and you're finding the whole. Yep. Does it have to be perpendicular? Nope, this one does not have to be perpendicular. Okay, the out to dude is the one that's perpendicular. So this goes vertex to the line containing the opposite side because sometimes it's not the opposite side, right? At a right angle. Yeah, it's got to be perpendicular to the opposite side or the line containing the opposite side. So like that is an altitude. So the difference between a perpendicular bisector and the altitude is the perpendicular bisector has to be at the midpoint and it doesn't have to come from the vertex. The altitude doesn't have to be at the midpoint, but it has to come from the vertex. And so altitudes always have to be perpendicular to one of the sides. Correct. That's why it's different. The in center is the midpoint, so vertex the midpoint. So the, what they have in common is they both come from the vertex, yeah. right? Um, but the the altitude has to be perpendicular. The the median has to hit the midpoint. Okay, they can be the same segment. So it happens two times in an isosceles triangle from the vertex angle. So if I drew an isosceles triangle, they're having way more fun than you guys. Sorry. All right, if you have an isosceles triangle and you're looking at the vertex angle, which is where the two congruent sides meet, only that angle, then all of these are the same segment. That would be the angle bisector, the perpendicular bisector, the altitude, and the median, all of it, okay? If it's isosceles and it comes from the vertex angle, only this one. So if I did it from this angle or from this angle, it wouldn't necessarily be true. Or if it's equilateral, yeah. right? So if it's isosceles, vertex angle, or equilateral, then they are all the same. So if you see questions like a perpendicular bisector can blank, it is blank an angle bisector, it's sometimes, because they can, it can sometimes overlap. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, all of them can sometimes be the other one. Altitudes, medians, angle bisectors, and what am I missing? Perpendicular bisectors, all of them. Okay. They would all, in, in, a tri in an isosceles triangle, from the vertex angle, they are all the same. Or in an equilateral triangle, they are all the same. That would be an angle bisector, a perpendicular bisector. A median and an altitude. How would you know it's an angle bisector? Oh, because how would you know it's an angle bisector? If it wasn't marked, Depends on what's marked, right? So let's say we know that this is the midpoint and this is a right angle, because at, at minimum you would have to know that. You could prove those two triangles are congruent, because a uh, side angle side. And, yeah. and then if the triangles are congruent, the top angles are congruent, because of CPCTC. Yeah. All right, point of concurrency of the altitude is what? What's the last one? Good. Good. This is an in on out and it's on the right angle yep all right then five five with inequalities in one triangle so the, the good thing is there's no like theorem right with altitude that's the only one that's not there's no theorem so it's a little bit less information cool. you, you, have, you know what that is this is called the hinge theorem oh no no this isn't the hinge theorem this is <laughs> yep this is the triangle inequality right this said The, well, let's just say, uh, the larger angle. Oh, wait. So can you say either one first? 
is greater than the large, it's, sorry, the greater, the larger angle is opposite the longer side. Okay, M numbers don't matter. So it doesn't even matter, like this does not matter. I don't want you writing 510, I don't want you to write 11. I want you to look at a triangle and tell me if I give you all the side lengths, you know how to put the angles in order. If I gave you all the angles, you'd know how to put the sides in order. That's it. The hinge theorem helps you later because it's shorter than writing out the whole thing, but this one doesn't have a name. There is no name. That's what I'm saying. This one has no name. Yeah. And then this one is the longer side. So basically, if I gave you a triangle and I gave you side lengths, you should be able to put the angles in order. And if I gave you a triangle and I gave you angles and you only have to have two this time, you should be able to put the sides in order. Okay, those are the only things you have to do there. Those should be super easy. And then the triangle inequality, uh, inequality theorem says the sum. The sum of the two sides. The two sides the third side. Good. They can't be the same, right? I can't have like three, three, and six. It has to be bigger. If it gives you two side lengths and it's asking you for the range, this is the third side of a triangle must be bigger than blank. The difference. It has to be bigger than the difference. Good, you're both right. And then less than the sum. The sum. So if I said 13 and nine, it has to be greater than four. Good. <laughs> I know we're all dying today. End of the week, end of the Friday. Jeez, Jose, share the wealth, would you? You're so selfish. Every class he has before One, five, six, inequalities of two triangles. So the hinge, no. All right, the hinge theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of a second triangle and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second. And then the sides of that. And the sides of the first. Good. Then the third side of the first. I know is longer <laughs> shush whiners the third side of the second triangle you know what it means though right and then you just write the words hinge theorem okay the geometry gods gave you a name so that you, it's easier so if two sides of a triangle I don't know Right. <laughs> so if you've got two sides that are congruent, that aren't congruent, but let's say that they are, let's say it's not trying to scale, and then this one is like 52 degrees and this one is 50 degrees, then I would say that side AB good, is greater than side CB. Yes, you did. Okay, and then the converse, we're just gonna say is the converse, right? So if you still have two congruent pairs, you still have to have that part, and third side, longer, 
than third angle larger. Why can't I do so short? Sure. sure. Wait, we have 10 minutes left for the line. Except that none of you have any battery. I no, 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 we have enough battery. Oh, for interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Not for this I know, no, it's Okay, i This kills my battery. Okay, so again, two <laughs> congruent. This time it'd be like this is eight and this is nine. So then I know. Angle R is bigger than angle O. Good. Angle R greater than angle O or angle O less than angle R. Easy stuff, right? We, yeah. I feel like the end of the chapter got a lot easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So your chapter review obviously has the problem to apply all that stuff, but obviously the vocab is important too. You're going to get. Sometimes, always, never. You're going to get fill in the blank. You're going to get, like, you know, explain why that would be hinge theorem, that kind of stuff. So make sure you know all that good stuff. And then you're going to do your chapter review to make sure you know how to apply it. And that's for a great return, uh, No, I'm going to post the answer so you don't have to turn it in. I'm going to change it. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're not smart enough to do a chapter review. No, I opened up the review, but I didn't make it due till Monday in case uh, anybody wanted to get a head start. Oh, you did not have homework to do today. Oh,